Recall that a critical point of this map or any map f from r1 into r1 is a point satisfying f x star or no no arrow is equal to 0 f f derivative is equal to 0 that's the critical point that we know and love, and the critical points tell us where to look for minima and maxima. And we define a critical point of f from rn into r1 is a point x star in Rn such that the gradient at f of f at x star is equal to zero, the zero vector. So this is just our n-dimensional analog. But the critical point could be a global minima, a global maxima, or a local minima, a local maxima, or neither of those, right? So in one dimension, in one dimension you could have a situation like this, right? And what are the maxima of this function? Well, the maxima are these points. These are the maxima. They're both local maxima, but only this one will be the global maxima, or maximum. Right? So this will be the max. And this, of course, down here will be a local minima, but the function continues on in both directions, so it's definitely not a global or absolute minimum. So we need a way to characterize what we mean by a absolute or local or local minimum. So we know what the absolute means. Uh, the absolute means that we look over all of space and we see which point is the maximum or minimum. But a local, a point x star is a local min or max, local min of f from r into r if there is a ball b with x star living in b such that f at x star is less than or equal to f of x for all other x's in b. And so that, that, that quantifies the picture here, or that, uh, that explains the picture here. A ball in one dimension is just an interval, and so I can check in this interval do I obtain a maximum. Right, and that's the maximum on this interval, this restricted interval. Uh, and in general, we'll be talking about interior points, right? So we'll actually, uh, if f from u into r with u a subset of rn, then x is an interior point of u if there is a ball a ball b
such that X is in B, which is contained in U. And the picture is, well, I've got some set U sitting in Rn. I've got a point X. And around here, I've got a small open ball that I can fit. And that's an interior point. Uh, what's not an interior point is something on the edge of U, so on this boundary. That would not be an interior point. And so, in particular, I can't really say, I can say that whether it's a, a max or a min, uh, but I really, I really want to talk about interior points instead. So now let's state our first order conditions. The fact that it's a necessary condition. So theorem. So this is a necessary condition for min or max. So let u or f from u into r b c1 on u contained in rn if x star is a local min or max of f in u and x star is an interior point of u that is it's in some ball of some radius that fits in u then the gradient has to vanish at that point that's equal to the zero vector. So that's a necessary condition. If, if I want to go looking for minima or maxima on a region, then I have to do that. And the reason we have to say interior point is that I could have a function that uh, has a local minima or maxima, uh, but it actually increases up to the boundary, right? If I just restrict then I could have a problem and uh, and therefore I, I might not have a zero gradient on the boundary but it might achieve a maximum right this is this is like the analogy from this is just the analogy from one dimension where you have to check the boundary or the the two endpoints of an interval if you're maximizing on that interval so the proof of this is actually pretty straightforward so without loss of generality without loss of generality assume x star is a max because we could always just consider negative f if we so desire therefore t equals zero is a max of f x plus t v for any x plus t v living in the ball that I can fit since it's an interior point uh, around x contained in u. So this is a max, and now this is a one-dimensional function of t. Then we have that 0 then has to be equal to, right, so this is a necessary condition. So this is a max, and so the necessary condition for the first order is that f 
at x plus tv evaluated at t is equal to zero is zero. That's our first order condition. This, of course, is just the directional derivative dotted with v. Uh, but this is true for any v. For any v, this has to be true. And in particular, the gradient of f star dotted with ei is equal to df dxi at x star which is equal to zero by this observation. And this is for i equals one up to n, and therefore I know that all of my components of the gradient vanish. And we're done. So now let's do a quick example. So suppose we have a function f x y is equal to e to the negative x minus y squared. Well, this is maximum if x is equal to y. Otherwise, I have e to the sum strictly negative number, which is lower than 1, which is what this will be if x is equal to y. And now we want to verify that this is, in fact, going to be the case, that the gradient is going to vanish at all these points. So the gradient of f at x, y, is equal to df dx df dy and we simply compute that that's going to be negative 2 x minus y e to the negative x minus y square and the second component is going to be minus 2 x minus y e to the negative x minus y square and this is equal to 0 it's clear that this is equal to 0 if x is equal to y. 